So hello, everyone. This is a special edition of Author Camp. I am so delighted to have Jackie Lappin as my guest presenter. Jackie is the founder of something called Speaker Tunity. You're going to be learning more about that. Uh, but she's here to give you some tips, some really terrific, what I think are insider tips that will get you booked on more podcasts and stages. Now, what she does is she actively helps people grow their businesses by selling more books, creating viewership, and ultimately changes their lives and the lives of the people that she uh, that she helps them reach. And all of that is done by introducing them to up to 9,000 radio shows and podcasts. And she's worked with some pretty big names. Uh, that includes Don Miguel Ruiz, Dr. Joe Vitale, uh, James Twyman, Ariel Ford, um, even uh, the publishing company Hay House. And of course, now she's working with me, <laughs> the publishing circle. And she's done something in addition to gracing us with um, a great mm -hmm. presentation. She's got a free gift for you, and she'll be talking about that. And it's not just any gift. It's a gift that would otherwise cost you $350. But I'll let her talk about that. I'm going to ask you to please post any questions in the chat. And we'll, we'll leave plenty of time for questions at the end. Um, so without further ado, I want to hand things over to Jackie. Well, Linda, I am just delighted to be here. Thank you so very much for that lovely introduction. And we've been friends a long time now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> And so I'm thrilled to now really be integrating into your community with this great opportunity to present to everybody. So um, as Linda says, I'm kind of a, 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 a somewhat of an expert on getting booked on podcasts and radio shows. Uh, More than somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to share some of the things that I've learned over the time with you. And I'm going to stick around and answer questions. And if you got questions about speaker tunity, I am here to, to to support you and uh, offer the wisdom of my experience. So let's get started on the factors, the 20 factors that tip the scales in your favor to get you booked on a podcast. So I know that podcasts are as hot as hell today. And by the way, guys, if you haven't figured it out yet, there are over 2 million podcasts Take that in, 2 million podcasts and counting. This has become the way that most people really drive a community and really increase their business success. And so the key and the blessings about podcasts is that they enable you to really reach into a particular marketplace. If you are talking to a podcast host, they have gathered people around who are particularly interested in this subject matter. So it is a very effective means to reach out to them. And I'm, I'm not putting down radio. It's more of a scattershot, but, and, and it's still valid. And certainly internet radio is just as valid. But the nice thing about podcasts is it's so targeted. So we're going to get started and really show how you can move forward in this space. So today, Podcasts are the hottest form of media for leaders, authors, and experts who wish to connect with audiences eager for information, solutions, empowerment, community, and entertainment. Now, the nice part of a podcast is it delivers all of that, especially if you can be a little bit entertaining. And I'm not saying that would be to, you know, jump around and, and, and be fun. I'm just saying that when you deliver your content if you can deliver it in a way that is compelling and interesting, that's plenty entertaining all on its own. So podcasts are growing exponentially, as we just said, because of the ease at which they can be created and by the incredible ability to grow an audience quickly. Um, and I, I have not updated this from when I said it exceeded 1 million, but the leading podcatchers, aggregators of podcasts like Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Stitcher are just the very tip of the iceberg. There are so many other 
services and podcatchers out there that aggregate various different um, podcasts within subject matters even. So there are ones that are dedicated to women and there are ones that are dedicated to business and there are ones that are dedicated to mind, body, spirit. So, and, and many of them are, will have all of those, but they're in channels. So you can go and find the ones that are right for you by focusing on a particular channel that offers a kind of content that's in alignment with your mission. And in most cases, you're going to have to make a really compelling case why a host should give you 30 minutes to an hour of their precious airtime. Keep in mind that many of the more popular hosts get hundreds of requests to be on their monthly shows. Now, many times you can simply email a host to get on their show, but a lot of times you're now filling out forms and you're in competition. And some of them don't even tell you how to get a hold of them because they don't want you to because they're handpicking their people. So this is a, a little bit of a crapshoot. You, you know, finding the host is one matter, and we can talk more about that later. And then getting their contact information is the next step. And then the third step is getting them to say yes to you. So you heard a little bit about what I do. I'm an expert at helping leaders get booked. I've got 35 years experience in publicity and radio podcast tours and in speaking engagements. Altogether, I booked more than 10,000 interviews in my career. And I'm also someone like you. I've been on the book side. So I have two best-selling books, one, The Art of Conscious Creation, How You Can Transform the World, and the second, Practical Conscious Creation, Daily Techniques to Manifest Your Desires, was the best-selling, um, was, uh, was deemed the best spiritual book of the year at the International New Age Trade Show. So I learned all this partly because I had a PR agency and was doing it myself, but more importantly, I was promoting my own books. And that's how we started doing the radio podcast tour, because I realized that nobody had aggregated all this information in one place. At the time, it was Internet radio and also um, uh, broadcast radio. And of course, as podcasts grew, grew, we added that and now it's it outstripped all the others. But uh, it was through learning how to do this for myself and really aggregate all of the shows in one place that I learned the tricks of the trade that I'm going to offer you. And then, of course, you just heard Linda talk about I'm the creator of Speakertunity, the speaker and leader resource company. Everything you need for getting on stages, radio shows, podcasts, virtual summits, virtual networking um, and uh, live and virtual conferences. Uh, you know, we've got it at, as the ultimate speaker toolbox. So. If you want to get booked, you will need to tip the scales in your favor. As I said, I booked more than 10,000 interviews in my career, and among them, nearly 200 luminaries, leaders, experts, and authors for whom we've done the radio podcast tours, generating between 30 and 80 interviews each. So, you know, th that adds up to somewhere around uh, 4,000 interviews a year when we end up doing this. So, um, I can honestly say I have a pretty good idea of what these 20 factors are that can make all the difference for you. So let's start with number one. You have a newsworthy, timely, or compelling hook. If you can make yourself and your subject relevant to what is newsworthy, timely, or a cultural hot button, you've got them. Your subject could be time to a holiday, an anniversary, or an event that is topical. Let's look at what's going on in the world today. Um, recently, I was told that one of the subjects outstripping all others in speaking, and I'm sure it's very much true here, is diversity and racial justice. Um, another of the hot buttons, of course, is um, you know what we're all dealing with, which is climate change. Um, you know, you, whatever the subject matter is that's going on now, and of course now it's how do you emerge from this pandemic and, you know, really get your business up and, and we're, of course now we're dealing with the economy and the great resignation, all of these things. If you can find some subject matter or a trend or something that is going on that this makes it very, very timely, then you've really got the host in your pocket. 
Um, and, you know, holidays, for example, you know, a lot of people benefit from the Valentine's Day time, you know, when you're talking about love and relationships or when you're talking about Christmas, you're talking about, you know, uh, choo choosing how to deal with all the relatives and the and depression and shopping tips and all of these different kinds of things. Um, time your subject matter to an anniversary, something that's going on in the world that might be topical, but because there's an anniversary coming up that this is really relevant to. So um, what was the one that's really everybody's been talking about recently? Any, you get the, you get the pick, picture, make it topical, make it timely, and you've got a hook. Number two, and for my money, this is really the most important. You have a solution for a problem, a fear, or a pain that the, this podcaster's audience suffers from. And I'm not just talking about personal growth. I'm talking about a business. I'm talking about, uh, you know, any kind of solution that moves them forward. So, you know, some of these issues are, do you have a method, a process, a product, a service, a coaching program, or other advice or resource? that brings a listener closer to peace of mind, love, health, or in the case of business, prosperity, profitability. If you can provide ease, influence, revenue, uh, time, giving people back their time, any of these things are going to be in service to your community and it's going to get a booker to say yes much more easily. They don't want to know about your product. They don't want to know the details of what it does. They just want a very simple explanation of how you're helping that audience get over this hump that they're suffering from. So you want to speak to the outcome of what the listenership is going to get after this host puts you on their air. So if you're going to be writing a pitch letter, if you're going to be putting it in a podcast introductory sheet <clears throat> or a speaker one sheet, the most important message you can deliver is how are you serving this audience? What's in it for them? Um, and so when you can do that, this is going to influence a booker to say yes. Number three, you have a book. Now, what do you know? We're talking about publishing here. Um, having a book gives you instant credibility. This implies you are an expert. And if your expertise matches the interest or need of the audience, then the host will find you an ideal guest. Books are a gateway to podcasts. It is the fastest and easiest way to get a host to accept the authority that you state that you are. If you are coming to them as an authority and wanting to get on their show, and that you could be an authority. I mean, this could even be a memoir with a message. If you are, have a book that basically cl clarifies why you're the expert, what you've been through that is shown, that will show other audience members, you know, the, the way forward, if you have a book, it's going to give you a leg up on other people who don't have a book. And I can tell you one of the ways I know this is because when we do our radio podcast tours, a lot of times those people that don't have a book, we lose about 5% of the interviews. We get 5% less interviews. When you have a book, you definitely have much more impact with a host and getting them to say yes. And so go get published with Linda and do more books with her. Number four. I, I have to just say, I love that idea, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's all the truth, Linda. So, <laughs> all right. So number four, you have a powerful personal story of overcoming redemption or triumph. Great human interest stories are a powerful enticement for a podcast host. Who doesn't love inspiration and motivation that shows people there's a path through trauma, tragedy, pain, or addiction? You are a living proof to the listeners that 
or now in these days, uh, viewers, uh, because about 60%, 60 to 70% of podcasts are now uh, visual as well as audio, video casts. So you're living proof to this audience that there is hope. This is so important. Um, your story shows them a path that they may see in, them, in themselves. And so when you're positioning yourself for a podcast, telling your rags to riches hero's journey story is a powerful um, impetus to get a booker to say yes. So if you've got a great story, lead with this um, and show that you know you can identify with the audience they can identify with you and then you can really lead them uh, by showing them how you did it. Number five, you're an expert in a field that this host has been discussing with his or her audience and you have the credentials to prove it. Do you have the credentials or proven results you can point to that demonstrates clearly your ability to bring knowledge and enlightenment to, these, to this audience? So in other words, hosts love to have people on who can bring clarity to a subject matter that they're already engaged with. So if they've been in this dialogue, now they don't wanna belabor it, but if you bring new enlightenment to this subject matter, then they're gonna wanna have you on the air because obviously they wanna give their listeners, their audience, the very best information so they can make good choices. And if you can present yourself as that expert because you've got the credentials and or the proven results, then you really can nail it. And of course, credentials have a very significant impact. So, um, it, you know, we're talking about, we're not just talking about your you know, college degree, we're talking about certifications, we're talking about um, some of the, um, uh, you know, the, the results that numer numbers perhaps that can show how you've impacted audiences or clients or all of these kinds of things. Um, you know, use your facts and your credentials as a, 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 um, a, a bridge to getting the host to say yes to you. Number six. Your clients include celebrities or other highly recognizable figures, or you have testimonials from such figures. One of the fastest way to get a yes from a booker is for, is for them to see you been hanging out with the rich, famous, and recognizable leaders. And we're not necessarily talking about celebrity of the entertainment type. They could be celebrities in your own field. Um, you know, certainly Jack Canfield's name opens doors in the personal growth field, and I can name so many others. So um, now there are a couple of ways to do this. You can say that, yes, you, you know, you're either in their programs or you've been you've counseled them or coached them. But even if you don't have a really tight relationship with a celebrity, you can use their name in vain. In other words, you can say something like, well, what is so-and-so and so-and-so and, 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 and you have in common? And then you can point to what it is that you, you've all had messy divorces, Johnny Depp. Um, you've all had, um, you all are born in the same month, whatever it might be. You can use, you can even use a quote from a celebrity. But if you can, you know, obviously if you get an endorsement from a celebrity, well, that's a number one home run. Um, but using the name of a celebrity in your pitch in a authentic way can actually uh, certainly also get the host's attention. Number seven, you have a unique talent that no one else or few others can claim. If you have a talent that offers something new, unique, entertaining, or possibly useful to their listeners, you have a great hook to get their attention. Um, you know, I, I have a, a, I was just telling Linda, I was, I go to a conference on a fairly, fairly re, you know, a regular basis. And one of the things he gets me to do is stand up in front of the audience and he calls, calls it Stump Jackie. Tell her what kinds of speaking gigs you want. You're up, maybe even if you're in a obscure industry and let's see if she can come up with the right kind of speaking gigs for you. 
Well, it's a talent that I have because I know this industry so very well. So if you have a talent or a gift that you can use to enlighten or entertain the audience, well, use it. I mean, if you do psychic readings on the air or numerology or, uh, you know, you can do a, a book evaluation, you know, or whatever it might be that you can actually do in front of the audience, that really is going to get their ex- get them excited. I, I often tell my clients, are you willing to do this on the air with the host um, if, you know, if we get you booked? And it's always a greater incentive to get the host to say yes. Because they're in it for themselves. I want to know more about me. So, um, you know, use this as a way in the door. Number eight, you have demonstrated your expertise program or product has achieved uncommon results. Results are a powerful statement of your gifts, talents, and expertise. Show the host what you've achieved for yourself or your clients, and you're going to get instant credibility and appeal. This is where I was talking about numbers, case histories, uh, the kinds of, you know, uh, zero to, to 60 that you can show that you can turn things around very, very quickly for people. I mean, when, when Linda said 9,000 radio shows and podcasts, that made you step up, didn't it? And when I said that I have, you know, we do 4,000 interviews a year, that may, got your attention. Well, when you can do that with a, a host in your proposal pitch letter, well, that's when you're going to get them. So keep this in mind, demonstrate your expertise, program or product using numbers, case histories, specific incidences. Number nine, you have a system or a program with a numbered list of tips. This is one of my all time favorites. Give your tips a snappy title or subject and capture the host's attention immediately. Tips can be do's and don'ts, mistakes not to make, that always works really well, things they must know, ways to be more successful, techniques to stay healthy, be creative, but be numbered. So tip number one is, tip number two is, tip number three is, and what's great about this, kind of getting the picture here because we're doing 20 factors. What's good about this when you're offering it to host is they know one, you know your subject, two, you're going to stay focused on this subject, um, three, your sub, your, the, the, the audience is going to get very specific advice and wisdom. And four, you're not going to be wandering all over the place. By focusing in on this, they know that you're going to give a good interview because you've really cut it down to the very specifics of what this audience needs to learn. Now, of course, when you're doing all of this and you're getting booked on all these podcasts, the intention is to get the host first to say yes, to give value to the audience, which is what this does. But again, at the very end, you're going to give away something free or you're going to make an offer, depending on what the host lets you do. And so there's an element of enrollment or sales at the end of it. But the core is going to be the value that you give, and that's what's going to get the host hooked. Number 10. You've had some extraordinary experience, paranormal, spiritual, escaped from a war-torn country, survived a terminal diagnosis, et cetera. Have you had a near-death experience that changed your life? Had a message from God that kept you from getting killed in an accident? Experienced a miracle recovery? Escaped danger or been on an incredible adventure? All of these things are really the kinds of or extraordinary experience that most human beings don't have. And you can be one of the few that can reveal what that's like. You can reveal all of what that took to get there. It makes you a hero, but it also says to this audience, wow, this person has something special going for them. I really want to learn from them. I really want to be in their circle. I really want to have hope that this can happen to me. All of those things is a really powerful endorsement to get a host to put you on their air. And we're only halfway there, guys. This is number 10. Number 11, you are a pioneer in emerging field. You give the host an idea of what subject you can set light on that would open a world of new possibilities for this listening audience. 
Now, so, you know, if you're creating something or doing something that's breakthrough that other people have not been able to do, then this is something you really want to emphasize in your pitch to them. And of course, um, you know, there are different kinds of pioneers. There's pioneers in the human growth. There's pioneers in technology. There's pioneers in just making your business run better. There's all kinds of things. But if you're leading the way and not a lot of other people are doing what you're doing, then you really want to play it up big. That this is something that you should not overlook as a great opportunity to make this host feel as if they're going to be breaking this, breaking this news to their audience. Number 12, you have discovered or created something remarkable that is useful for the advancement of some aspect of the culture. Maybe you're looking beyond the individual and what you offer has a wider impact, if not on the whole world, on a segment of society. Obviously, we're talking about, you know, environment or, um, you know, how we, we all live better and maybe we deal with, you know, um, you know, uh, changing the culture, um, helping whole uh, groups of oppressed people, you know, whatever you've got, if you've got something that is helping advance our world, our, our culture, then, or even a segment of the world that's specific to this, you want to make sure that that host knows the scope of what you're bringing to the table. Number 13, you are doing something unique and noteworthy that is saving human or animal lives or impacts the health of the, clim of the, of the climate or doing something selfless that is making a difference. You want to tell your story, show the impact, and illustrate how you are bringing others to join your campaign. Making a real difference is a great focus for many hosts. So if you're leading a movement in some way, that is gathering people together for the betterment of humans, animals, climate, planet, whatever it is, then you really want to point out that you are on the top of this mountain and you are, you are leading others to the promised land um, and that you're doing something selfless and kind and committed to the betterment of the world, mankind or animal kind. So animals are always, you know, TV, all the TV producers say, you know, never put a, 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 um, an animal on a show because it's going to take over everybody's. That's what everybody's going to remember and what it, it upstage everything else on the on, on the show for the day. But, um, you know, that that's because people care. People care about animals. People care about babies. They care about the future of babies and the world that we're bringing them into. So when you've got something along this line, you really want to make that point to the host. Number 14, you are doing something that uplifts, uplifts people in a time of challenge. You empower people or offer hope. Sometimes just offering empowering stories, wisdom, or strategies is enough to get a hope to give you the spotlight. <clears throat> so this is, this is the inspirational spot. This is the motivational. And if you can basically show how you're uplifting people when others, when people are, are challenged or in suffering or going through something that is so difficult for them, um, and especially when it's collective. When it's not just, you know, one person here and one person, but a lot of people are, you know, dealing with the same issue. And it could be like one particular disease, but a lot of people deal with it. Or it could be, um, you know, a, a, a big wide audience of people that are all dealing with it. Of course, COVID was the big thing in this last couple of years. And now it's long COVID. How are you getting over and, how, and, and suffering, you know, people that are suffering from this? So if you're op offering hope, to people who are dealing with something challenging and difficult, well, this is catnip to the, the, the bookers. So keep that in mind when you're positioning yourself. Tip, factor number 15, you've done something specific on social media that is creating significant buzz culturally or worldwide. Are you a YouTube sensation or a TikTok? or a viral, viral meme instigator? Have you used social media in a revolutionary way or created a site that's attracting gazillions? 
For the right show, someone breaking through on social media is a no-brainer guest because they know you're going to bring their show to your audience. When you, are, when you are playing in a big game on social media, they are going to absolutely want you on. But it's also newsworthy. Everybody wants to know, how can I do that on social media? How can I change my life, my fortunes, my community, and attract all these other people? So if you're doing it, you want to play this big to the host, and you're going to get see yourself get booked. Factor number 16. You can illuminate or shed light on something that's crying out for more clarity and transparency in the cultural conversation. So there's a controversy, cultural confusion or downright misinformation, disinformation being disseminated by the media. And you have truth, facts, and expertise to offer that provides transparency and clarity. Well, don't be shy. Get in there and get your voice out. Hosts love to have people who can shed real light on murky quarters. So obviously the fake news issue, dis disinformation has been the biggest story of the last Ooh, four or five years. And, um, and so if you are in a position and you have the facts down to dispute what they're talking about, to offer your own take on the reality as opposed to the speculation, the, um, the untruths, the, uh, the superstitions that are out there in the cultural marketplace, then step up, get in there. Do, you know, state, state where you stand on this and let the host know that you can really uh, provide some illumination and are willing to get into the fray. They, you know, especially the controversial news shows, they love people who are willing to subject themselves to, um, you know, a, a debate back and forth so that it becomes really good media. And um, so that'll give you a leg up in that area. Factor 17, you become an influencer with significant social media presence that you can draw more people to the podcaster show. Now we settled out a little bit on the other one where we talked about being an influencer, being do, doing um, uh, you know big things on social media. This is just, can you really bring a substantial audience and media presence? You don't have to be famous. You don't have to have done you know superstar kinds of things on the internet. You just have to have a good enough audience, a big enough audience that you are willing to bring to the this show to their attention. And if you can really show them, if you can go to them and say, hey, I have an audience of 150,000 on my social media. I would love to be on your show and let, you know, let me uh, introduce you to my community as well. I mean, how can a host say no to that? They're going to say yes. So um, if you're, you say you're willing to promote this host show to the, your audience, you should make this really clear in your pitch letter. Now, if you have a smaller audience, gloss over this. Don't talk about your numbers. Only talk about it if you really can open some big doors for them. Factor number 18, you have a podcast in a related field that will trade for airtime with the podcast host. And here's and with, you know, so many people doing this today, this, you know, having their own podcast, this makes a lot of sense. And here's another quote, 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 if you have a podcast in a related field that the host you're pitching would benefit from being on offered to do this exchange, you will offer a, a you know, spot on your show in exchange for a spot on his or her show. Uh, I would not lead with this. I would end with this. You don't want to make this up front. You know, hey, put me on your show. I'll put you on my show. Um, and especially if you have a smaller show than they do. But at the very end of your pitch letter, this is a nice thing to throw in. And by the way, you know, I do have a show on my own and I would love to have you on as well. So, you know, just make sure that you don't use it as um, a, a, a bludgeon, but you use it as leverage. Tip number 19. You write a pitch letter that is compelling, well-written, concise, and captivating. Your pitch needs to be crisp, compelling, and intriguing. It has to tell the host concisely why you. Now, 
Um, I, I'm going to give you a couple of, of, of tips here, but if you want some professional guidance on writing your radio podcast and videocast pitch letter, then I would encourage you to check out my, my e-course, Rocket Your Radio and Podcast Bookings. And Linda can put this link in the chat box as well as you see it here. Getbook.biz forward slash rocket hyphen the publishing circle. And that's getbook.biz forward slash rocket hyphen the publishing circle. Now, so when you're going to be writing your pitch letter, you don't, you can actually go to a page and a half. It does not have to be really, really condensed, but it, sh it really has to sing the whole way. And the first part of your pitch is going to be all about, you know, what the hook is. The middle of your pitch is going to be all about your credentials. And the last part of your pitch is really going to be about what are you going to be talking about? What is so interesting? What are they going to learn? So, but that's going to go into much, much more detail and get you really situated on that. Now, in today's world, there are a couple of different ways that you can pitch yourself. You can pitch with a pitch letter or you can pitch with a podcast introductory sheet. And you see one of those over to the right. And this is a one pager uh, that gives your bio and your headline skewed toward what is the problem you solve? What is the hook of your story? A couple of great testimonials from people preferably has had you on their shows before. And then three to five topics that you want to cover or that you're an expert in so that the host can say, oh, I want that one. Or I want to talk about all five of these. If you can, you know, concisely put that together. Now, that's another service that we do. And so if you want to run over and get one of these on your own, you can go by to um, getbooks.biz forward slash sheets hyphen the publishing circle. And that's getbook.biz forward slash sheets hyphen the publishing circle. Now, what's good about this is um, you don't even really have to know all the details of what to give us because you pick from a template, you choose colors, and then you can just fill in the blanks. Uh, fill in the, the the form that we give you and we'll get it back to you in about two days, maybe three or four if there's a weekend. Um, but it makes it really easy. Now, here's the thing. You can use one or the other or you can put them together. So you can send your pitch letter and attach your, po your podcast introductory sheet if you want to do that. So it's up to you which works for you. If you want it down and easy and just send a little short email along with attaching your, your you know, what you, what you want to talk on and then attach your uh, podcast introductory lever. It's, it's easier, but it may not be as convincing as a full pitch letter. So there, those are your choices. 20, you write a subject line that is irresistible to open. You have to write a subject line that will compel them to open the email. And here's a really important tip. You first start with these words, guest for your show. So they know it's not spam. Capture their attention and intrigue them so that they will want to know more. That subject line should speak to the value that you're bringing to their audience. Whether it's a compelling story, whether it's the product, the, pro the, the, pro the problem you solve, whatever it is. That is really the heart of, you know, you, it, it, and yes, it can be a little longer. It doesn't have to be three or four words um, because the first four words are going to be guests, guests for your show. But keep it to no more than about 10, 10, 10 words, if you can, after guests for your show. And, uh, and but, um, it's got to be irresistible. It's got to be, it's not, hey, I'd like to be booked on your show. It's give them what you're talking about. And, you know, a lot of times, most of the time, you're going to be writing this in the third person. So you can write it as if it's about you, as opposed to just saying me. Um, and so, you know, it's it, it, you're highlighting it as if you're bringing them this incredible guest. So that is really the last critical tip that is going to get you going. But we're not done. So now, do you want to know a couple of easier ways to get booked? then maybe hunting down all those uh, podcasts on your own. That's a pretty challenging task. It's a lot of your time. Well, I've got a potential couple of potential solutions for you. So stick around because there's also the free gift here. So 
Here's one option for you. It's the Done For You podcast tour that you've heard me talking about. Uh, the Conscious Media Relations Radio Podcast Tour, and where we'll introduce you to the nine thousand radio shows of podcasts. And if you're spe- and and, and here's here's all the areas that we cover: personal growth, wellness, spirituality, women's empowerment, self help, conscious business, memoirs with a message. And we do a lot of books that are business oriented, but they're not hard business skills. They're all about using your business to make a difference in the world, improving the lives of your employees improving the lives of the people out into the world that your business can make a difference for. And uh, as we summarize it, improve a, a, anything that improves one's life, one's business or the planet. So now, um, if you would love to have experts like myself, I'm the one that writes the pitch letter, guys, uh, to read your book, write the pitch, make these introduction and book your calendar solid, then I urge you to go to consciousmediarelations.com and see our 80 rave reviews. Um, and they are pretty astonishing. And you heard some of the people that we've worked for and you will see their testimonials there. Now, if you want to know about the program, and I'm gonna, I can tell you more about it, you want to go to consciousmediarelations.com forward slash tour. And, um, and you're going to get a lot of the details. And I think I have some of them here, but it's all reiterated there. Um, okay, so no, I, I don't. I don't think I have a lot of. The, but here are some of these testimonials. Um, you, you know, you we you made our, our book the uh, the I told a ton, the a best selling book. We, I sold a ton of books. It really helped book sales. That's our friend Ann Kate Sullivan. Um, another one. Um, this you might recognize um, the Chris Atwood from the Passion Test. And he said, uh, we put together a radio, amazing radio, radio tour and got him on 60 shows. And then Joe Vitale over here uh, burned through a lot of publicists over the last two, two decades. But Jackie Lappin wrote the best media pieces I've ever had, worked the hardest, longest and most persistent and got more radio interviews than I wanted. I love her and her work. And then Gary Salyer, what I love about him is he ta- estimated that he talks to between three and five million people, um, heard his message. He told us that he got 85 uh, podcasts when we got all done with him. He stayed on with us and with us for some extra time. He not only gained book sales, but clients as well. And he tells me all the time how those interviews he did two years ago are still paying off for him and people who hear them on archive shows. So um, I would love to talk to you a bit more about the details on this and figure out if this is really something that's going to work for you. So number two. So this is a situation where, you know, it's not a, you know, a done for you solution. This is one where we will give you the contacts and you can go after them. And we have 40 podcast radio shows and that's video casts each month that are eager for guests like you. So um, the first one is called Speaker Tunity Radio Insider. And those are life enhancing shows, all of the things that are going to improve one's life. And then the other one is Speaker Tunity Radio Insider for business. And that is 40 B2B shows. So if you are delivering a contact content to a business audience, that is perfect for you. And they just keep coming constantly. And we're always updating these. And by the way, in any of our resources at Speaker Tunity, if you ever find stuff outdated, all you do is send an email to updates at speakertunity.com. And we're going to get you the newest information. So for each show, you're provided complete contact information for the host or producer. And this covers broadcast, satellite, podcast, and internet radio shows. So for this one, you can get immediate access by going there yourself. And it's getbooked.biz forward slash radio hyphen the publishing circle. And again, that's getbooked.biz forward slash radio radio hyphen the publishing circle circle and we love to work with our our, you know at any given time we have over a hundred people in in each of these because they love it and some of these people have stayed with us for four or five years because they just keep getting valuable resources and now we're building out year two of speaker tunity radio insider for business because there is such a demand for the, the next level up for those and what, here's what some of these folks have said. Um, this gal, P- Patricia Can- Can- Canolia, um, started to um, 
she wanted she was she was a publisher herself and brought her podcasts and radio shows in-house and after a few months she returned to this product because of the the quality of the leads were better than results than they were having doing it on their own and the other one is a as a publicist and she says to those just thinking about signing up for speaker tunity tip sheets just let me say do it today for um, she's doing PR for a mainstream uh, author and thought it would be not necessarily much help as it would, but boy, was she wrong. Um, with just two tip sheets, she booked five great shows and she loved that. And she says, it's just full of great content. So all of those are great reasons why you should, you know, step into their footsteps and take advantage of these resources. And here is the free gift I was talking about. Now I've been telling you how to get booked on a show. Now you want to know how to become a formidable and sought after podcast guest, because what this means is that you can make sure that you are building your great reputation at a podcast guest and that podcast hosts looking for new experts to present to their listeners. They want to know, uh, they, they want people who are great guests and they're going to hear about you there, because podcast hosts talk about them between themselves, they're going to see that you get booked on more because you are a great podcast guest. So I want to um, encourage you to go and grab this, um, and it's actually longer than this presentation from a tip standpoint. There's more information there. So go to getbook.biz forward slash guest hyphen the publishing circle, and again that's getbooked.biz forward slash guest hyphen the publishing circle. So there you are. All those links will be in the chat box that Linda has been putting in. And I will stop the share and open myself for questions and uh, um, in, in any uh, 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 subject matter that might be helping you to get on any stage, whether it's podcast or others. My goodness, thank you so much, Jackie. This has been tremendous. And I actually have some um, thoughts that came up and, and some things that I think it would be helpful maybe for you to comment on for people. And then I'll keep an eye out for any questions in the chat box too. But one of the things, a comment that I have is um, one that I make often to people who are in my author camp is that books don't expire. They don't have an expiration date. So it doesn't matter if you're, you're just getting ready. Wouldn't you agree? It doesn't matter if you're just getting ready to release or you have, you know, maybe your book's been on the market for a while. What, what would you say to that? I, I say that hosts don't care when your book comes out or came out. All they really care is, are you giving them great, great content? And so um, you can start pumping it in advance. You can um, start, you know, key it around your launch. You can revitalize a book use, or you revitalize a business using an older book as a, um, an entree. So, you know, the, 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 any, any book is a way to get back to take advantage of getting on podcasts. Yes. Okay. And then um, something that you said that, I'm astonished about is that uh, you said that 60 to 70% of podcasts are also video right now. That, right. That's amazing. So yeah, a lot of what the hosts do is um, they, you know, they obviously want to put it up on their YouTube. Um, sometimes they put it on their Facebook and a lot of them, um, and, and even if they're doing an audio, a lot of times they're using Zoom and they're stripping the audio from the podcast. And so you just don't want to show up in your PJs with your bedhead. <laughs> well, and the other thing is, and it helped me kind of get over a lot of self-consciousness. When I look at some of the, the people that are on the, the videos, I mean, these are not movie stars, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a lot of them are, you know, just very regular looking people. So you, you don't have to necessarily, you know, have a certain look to you. You just need to have good content, I would say. Right. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Um, and you really just, and, and, and there's part of it is also in presenting it. 
you don't want to present in a monotone that nobody really is going to get excited about, you know, level up and down your voice, um, you know, show you're excited about something, mm -hmm. um, you know, get, in, get engaged with the host, um, even ask the host questions, ask the audience questions, you know, make it lively. Um, and I have a question here. I'm sorry, were you finished? No, go ahead. I have a question here. Um, Jean says, on a podcast, do you recommend talking in talking in detail about the book or about the topic or related topics? Well, the Good first question. thing is you don't want to give away all of your secrets on a, on a podcast. This is an opportunity to tease the audience. So you want to give some value and you want to talk about the in, in generalities and you can give some idea of what's in the book, but don't give it all away. You know, give them an idea and say, and of course, then you're going to find more of this in my book. And it's a way, keep in mind that your interview is an opportunity to seed the, you know, people. So, you know, you may not get into a lot of the details about the book. Toward the end, the host will say, well, you know, tell us where you can get your, you know, book or, you know, tell us, you know, how to get a hold of you. But in the meantime, in that interview, you can always drop in, well, in my book, or as I say in my book, or, you know, here's something that somebody said about my book, you know, you can, and, and by the way, it's not always how to, it, and you don't want to say just my book, you want to say the title of the book at least once or twice. Yeah. Molly's got a great book title here, uh, Fake Mike, Breaking Hearts and Bill King Seniors, <laughs> about widowed senior women being scammed out of their savings. Oh, Ooh. dear. <laughs> Hot topic there. Yeah. So... <clears throat> I, I loved all the different ideas on what you could present um, as <clears throat> your speaking topics. What would you say about switching up, like maybe not offering um, everybody the same topic? Do you want to vary that a little bit? Because um, I saw a bunch of them that, you know, I could just riff on. <laughs> well, I think certainly um, if, if you're subject matter covers a couple of different areas or audiences, you can oftentimes reframe it and focus on a different subject matter for each of those different audiences. Now, obviously when we do it, we do one pitch to 9,000 and we get results. But if, you know, it probably would get more results if we did one-on-ones, but that's not our business model. And as an author, if you really want to get booked on something, well, yeah, do an individualized pitch letter for a particular audience uh, segment of podcasts and then do a different podcast, you know, set to a different set of uh, uh, audience. And sometimes what I will do is I will say I can talk on the following things and then the host selects where they want to poke, focus it. So that's another way to do it. You know, give them the opportunity to say, okay, I really want you to talk on that. It's like you, Linda, I can talk on a million different subject matters. Well, not a million, but probably about 20. I have 20 or 30 different presentations already lined up and ready to go. But you said for my audience, I want to talk about podcasts. And so right there, I had a presentation that worked exactly for what you needed. And it's the same on a podcast. Yeah, well, and podcasts, what I see uh, as a publisher is people who do get booked on podcasts can definitely sell more books than even paid media. So if you're able to get booked on podcasts, you're really doing yourself and the publisher a favor. And as a publisher too, I don't book people on podcasts. That's something that the author himself needs to do. Right. Um, one of the things, and I wish I could remember the name, the, um, there was, and there might have been a couple of people who had best-selling books, and they accredited that to being on a podcast a day for a year. And I think one of the guys, they were both men, I wish I could remember who, um, I think one of them was on more than one podcast a day. And so if you want to guarantee yourself a, a bestseller, first of all, have a fantastic book. 
but get on podcasts because even having a great book, if it's not visible, isn't going to sell. So I love what you've shared here is opportunities, Jackie. Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, Jean is wondering, does your list include podcasts in Canada? It certainly does. We, Thanks. our area of greatest, uh, you know, focus is always North America. So U.S. and Canada, we, you know, we don't think of Can Canada as our, as our, is our poor stepsister. Um, we're at, whenever we can get good information. For example, we just did our new TEDx directory. And, um, but pre, prior, pre, prior to um, the pandemic, in, during the period of the pandemic, it had, the numbers had dropped to like 250. And uh, this time it's up to 550 of them. And I, you know, and, and a, get, get a good 40 or 50 of them are Canadian. So, I mean, we're always, Everything we do includes Canada. Here's another uh, question. Do you work with people wanting to do a TEDx speech? Well, the first question is, Linda, do you, do you, have, you have a TEDx expert coming on on this summit series? I don't, but we okay. can talk about that. <laughs> well, I do have a series of experts. I do not teach people how to do a TEDx speech, but I do have a number of TEDx experts that I can pass you along to at this point. And then, Linda, if you want me to give you some names, I can do that, too. OK, all um, I have to hear is from people um, in, in listening now or listening to the replay what you want to hear, because I'm happy to to get somebody booked. Um, do you recommend that authors send an advanced reader copy when they are discussing their book on the show? Here's the deal. You may think that this is a digital world, but 90% of the hosts want a physical book. And so do not send it to get the interview, send, unless it's a mega show. But by and large, send them the pitch. And when they commit to the show, then send them the pitch, the book. Now, some will say, I need to read the book before I make a decision. That's maybe 20%. Um, and so you, you need to have enough books on hand well in advance. When we do our radio podcast tours, we tell our hosts, send us 40 books. So we know that we can cover that right off the top. And then we'll send you back the ones that you don't need, that we don't use. But 90% of the time, we're lose, using the majority of them um, and because these hosts really want it. But you also need to have a digital copy. And here's why. Speaking of our Canadian friends, if you're sending from the U.S. to Canada, it's exorbitantly expensive. And if you you don't want to be sending books overseas. And then lastly, there may be somebody who says, oh, my God, I had somebody drop. Can you be on my show on Thursday? You don't have time to get me the book. Can you send me a digital copy? So for all those reasons, you have to have both on in, in hand. Now, one of the things that you mentioned was getting on mega shows. Um, it's my thinking, and I'd, I'd like to, to hear what you think, that people should maybe start out with some smaller shows just to kind of get their feet wet and, you know, become Absolutely. a little more, uh, a little less shy <laughs> doing that. Um, one, you want to get your message down. Two, you want to get your confidence up. Three, you want to get into a rhythm you know, when and how you deliver your, you know, your, your offer, whatever it is, whether it's a freebie or your book or whatever it might be. Um, and you just want to make sure that you can handle the environment, that you're not feeling pressured, um, that you are, um, you can deal with, uh, you know, back and forth, call-ins, all kinds of those other things. Because the higher you go up, people can be very welcoming but they also can be very highly expectant and expect you to perform at a certain level. So you don't wanna start and fail on the big stage. You wanna start it down at ground level, get your, dick, your ducks all in a row, and then you can move up the line. And, and also the bigger shows are gonna to wanna to see that you've been on other shows that are fairly decent before they're gonna let you on. It's, it's the same way in the television industry. You're not gonna get on the Today Show unless you can show that you knocked it out of the park on a bunch of local television shows. Um, and even then it's hard to get on, but um, 
you know, they're not going to take a chance on you without having seen some video of you. Yeah. And those are little clips that you can put on your website. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, a final thought that I had um, that I've mentioned before in Author Camp that I think is worth mentioning here is you want to listen to the shows before you approach them. <laughs> right? Especially if you really, really want to get on a particular show. If you, you know, if this show is important to you, absolutely do listen to it, get a sense of what they're going to like and go see what they booked in the past. You know, you can see if you slot into what's, you know, they, something they haven't covered already, because a lot of times you, if, you're, if you're pitching the same thing that other people have pitched before them and they've seen it a million times, they're not going to touch it. And that's a really important distinction that I make everywhere. You know, it got to be different. It cannot be the same old, same old. If you're just telling people, oh, I help people remove their emotional blocks. I got news for you. That ain't going to sell it to you any longer. You've got to have very specific um, stories, niche, um, methodology, branding, any of those things that are going to make you stand out. Absolutely. Well, Jackie, this has been so informative, and I really appreciate you offering such a nice gift to everyone. Um, as I said earlier, I'll provide all of those links again. Uh, but thank you so, so much. You've been a terrific guest and just provided us with so much value. Thank you, Linda. It's been a joy to be here. I just want to invite everybody, if you are looking at speaker tunity assets and you need some information, whether it's you know TEDx or anything else, come on over, set a meeting with me, and we will find what is best to suit you and really help you market your book to the your target audience. So Linda, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your community today. And and um, you know, thanks for having me on. It's been a great pleasure. And thank you everybody for being here. Bye for now. <laughs>